Hello, good evening everyone. Yeah. Welcome to the new Ant Biology webinar series presented to you by the Translational Outcome Research Group of the Department of Zoology, University of Calcutta. This new series aims to celebrate the latest advances in the field of life science along with its re relatedness to other disciplines. I am Ronita and I will be your moderator for today's session. Before we begin, I would like to inform you that you can post your questions in the YouTube chat box and we shall moderate them at the end of the lecture. You are free to interact with each other and with the speaker. If you have any question or comments meant for the speaker or for us, feel free to email us and we shall address them to the best of our abilities. And you will also send us your feedbacks through the feedback link, which will be provided in the YouTube chat box near the end of the session. Our convener, Professor Dr. NRA Banerjee has sent welcome greetings for our speaker and to all of us. So we, on behalf of our madam, welcome Dr. Shobuj Kumar Choudhury in this end biology platform and are requesting you, sir, to please deliver your valuable speech to enrich all of us here. Now, I am give you a brief introduction of today's speaker. Dr. Shobuj Kumar Choudhury is an associate professor in the Department of Library and Information Science at the University of Calcutta. He did his PhD from Jadavpur University on the impacts of IPR on, department, uh, on biodiversity and biotechnology in India from Jadavpur University as GRF and a gold medalist in MHC in Marine Science from the University of Calcutta and Associateship in Information Science from the National Institute of Science Communication and Information Resources, CSIR, New Delhi, with the specialization in patent information system. He has been teaching and supervising MPhil and PhD for futuristic research agendas for several years on IPR, traditional cultural expressions and indigenous knowledge system in addition with his other two core research areas, sustainable development and disaster resilience. Dr. Shobuj Kumar Choudhury has written numerous research articles, book chapters published in national and international journals on IPR. He has completed several MOC and regular courses with distinction on IPR from different world-renowned institutes and universities, including patenting in biotechnology from Technical University, Denmark, and Copenhagen Business School, Denmark, in 2017, <laughs> and recipient of prestigious Sastri Indo-Canadian Fellowship in the year 2018 and 19 as visiting faculty in York University, Toronto, Canada, and CEU HESP Research Excellence Fellowship in the year 2017 and 18 at the Center for Law, Ethics, and Biomedicine, the Central European University in Budapest, Hungary, and worked on patent on medical innovations. He was also the principal investigator of the UGC research project on copyright completed in 2013 Dr. Choudhury is a former civil servant in West Bengal Civil Service, a naturalist, passionate music lover, and a bibliophile. We are glad to host him today and excited to hear from him. So, sir, I welcome you once again, and the platform is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ramita, for your very generous introductions. Uh, thank you so much thank for you, having sir. me over here. So, let's get started. Let me share my slide. Has it been shared? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I'm making it full screen. Sir, please full screen. Yeah, I made it. Is it okay? 
yes it is okay uh, uh, please hide the lower bar yeah. lower white bar is okay now fine yes sir okay so let's get started with my topic uh, patent and covid crisis basics debates and shared vision before starting i would like to tell you the whole of my lecture will be divided into three components in the first aspect i'll be discussing the basics of the patent patenting and the intellectual property and the second part i would like to share what is happening behind the scenes and the issues around and the third what are the shared visions and inspirations what we can look up to to combat this pandemic so let's begin with the basics of the intellectual property what is intellectual property and what is intellectual property rights there are property of two types you know uh, that you can touch property uh, let's say for any physical thing say for uh, your car your pen your book that you can touch but some properties are there that you cannot touch can you touch your dream no can you touch your idea no but idea is not a copyrightable idea is not a patentable but idea is the basic precursors of any manifestations of creative aspects suppose you want to make a machine suppose you want to write a uh, book basic precursors of writing that book or apparatus or a device comes from your human mind or a human brain so any creations or property which is coming from our human mind or human brain is called intellectual property and the legal rights conferred over this property is called the intellectual property rights as it's coming from our human mind or human brain is intellectual property this is why it is called intellectual property okay so i will not go to the into the details what types of because uh, i would like to focus primarily on the how this ip is affecting our covid issues the pandemics so i would like to focus on it so what are the basic types of the intellectual property rights basic types are the, there are two types primarily it was of two types industrial property artistic and literary property but with the inceptions of these strips you know you all know about these strips so as a founding member of the strips we had to comply with the trips rules and regulations and as per the trips rules and regulations new things which were earlier not considered as a property have been started as a uh, intellectual property have been started considering as intellectual property what are those that is a database indicated service and plant data slides though it doesn't come under the purview of today's discussion in for today's discussions what are important that is a from our COVID pandemic uh, purview, that is a patent, industrial design, and then undisclosed information and the copyright. So uh, let us start with this. Uh, uh, possibly you know about a uh, uh, basic idea of the intellectual property right. Still, I would like to have a brief recap. What is a patent and uh, what is a uh, copyright? So little bit things I would like to discuss. What is a patent? Patent obviously is a kind of intellectual property rights, different component. So it's a kind of intellectual property rights that is given to an inventor for a limited period of time. Right now it's 20 years all over the world. It is given 20 years to the inventor for a limited period of time. And in exchange of that, inventor has to disclose his invention to the society so that anyone sitting in any corner of the world can reproduce his or her invention. So patent has two basic aspects. One is a protection. Government is giving protection and you have to disclose your inventions. Patent is a kind of, you know, is a social contract between the society and the inventor. Society is protecting your invention. You are getting protection for 20 years, but you have to disclose your invention so that anyone can produce, reproduce your intentions. So that is the basic thing, basic aspects of a patent. It is given for only 20 years. As I said, uh, I'm coming to the next slides. Yeah, this is a social contract, as I said, in between the society as well as in the um, inventor. But after any inventions, every inventor 
has two options. Will you go for a patent route or whether you should opt for the straight secret route? Because both are important and both have some merits and demerits. As I said, if you opt for the patent for your invention, you will get protection if it is violated. If your patent is infringed by anyone, any corner of the world, you can go to the law, lawsuit. You can get a legal protection. But the trade secret is a kind of undisclosed information that you want to keep with you. That is a uh, secrecy is most important perspective in the trade secret. Once the secret is disclosed, so everything is lost. But unfortunately, in the trade secret or undisclosed information, which is playing up a special role when I was studying about this uh, COVID-19 and these uh, issues related with the patent, I found the many things. Most of the companies, they have tried to uh, include this trade secret and undisclosed information, tried to include all this, including the patent. So trade secret, once the secret is disclosed, so everything is lost and you will not get any protection. So that is the basic difference between the patent and the trade secret. What might happen if you do not uh, go for the patent for your inventions? Somebody else might patent it. It's quite obvious. And competitors might take advantage of it. And what other things might happen? That is the potential for licensing, selling or transferring the technology would be severely guarded. What are the basic criteria to get a patent? There are basic three criteria. One is a, it has to be novel. That's a novelty criteria or original. Second one is a inventive step or non-obviousness. And third one is a industrial application. The second step inventive step is a quite debatable. Because uh, if I ask you that, uh, what is the summations of the two plus two? Certainly everyone uh, will say it's a four. But uh, if your summation of 2 plus 2 is forced, then you are not going to get a uh, patent protections or a patent grant. Why? Because it has to have some spark of creativity. It should be 5 or a 3 or something else which is not obvious. Only then you will be eligible to get a patent. Industrial application is uh, European Union, especially European Union organizations, EPOs. Instead of this saying this industrial application, they are much more futuristic. They say you need not to explain the present industrial application to get a patent or to apply for a patent application. What is needed? What is the future? Susceptible, they say in their patent act, susceptible to industrial application, future industrial applications. So that's a very interesting. So all over the world, there are basic three criteria. One is a novelty, second one is an inventive step, and third one is industrial application. But from our life science point of view, when we are thinking about the uh, patenting of the drug molecules or any kind of uh, antibiotic candidates or vaccine candidate, whatever the things, most important point is that depositions of the microorganism to an idea, international depository authority, because India now is a member of the Budapest Treaty. As a part of the member with the treaty, you have to submit your microorganisms because uh, say for trips or even in our patent act, nowhere microorganisms have been clearly defined. That does not mean that the, there is a no practical understanding in the patent office for examinations for microorganisms. Yes, there is a organism because patent people are very shrewd. They do not define, they do not tell you what are patentable. Rather, they say what are not patentable. They want to uh, widen their jurisdictions of understanding. So the depositions of the microorganism is a very important aspect for the biological patent or a life sciences patent. As I said, there are two aspects of the patent. One is a protection and the disclosure. You are getting protection for 20 years from the society, that means a government. And you have to disclose your invention so that anyone can reproduce, can replicate your invention. And patent is given for 
both product and process patent earlier india was a uh, traditionally very much you know uh, very much a custom with the reverse engineering what is reverse engineering suppose one medicine or one molecule is not available in india our scientists used to visit all those nations where it is available pick up at that molecule examine it in our laboratory and they can make some analogous medicines okay so that's a reverse engineering and that was the uh, basic thing this is why trips is uh, actually has given such a stringent or a rigorous patent examination system as a part of this what are the basic changes happened in 1995 but india change in fact came as a india was a developing nation so 10 years grace period was given to join or to start or enactment our patent laws earlier only the process patents were allowed right now both product and process patents are allowed i'm just giving an example suppose we all like uh, we know uh, this, there are calcols or any kind of paracetamol i'm giving a separate example it's a simple example it's a paracetamol calcol is a brand you know many companies is having their own paracetamol tablets different way on paracetamol tablets separate calcol can be made earlier only the particular process by which the calcol was uh, made can be patented right now both calcol and the different other processes all infinite processes by which a calcol can be made are patentable are absolutely patentable so both product and process patentable there is no alternate route once a product is patented so if you are making your product or a calcol in suppose in a b process which is not popular or which is not known earlier and still you cannot make it because the whole product is itself a, a patented product so this way product and process patents are allowed in india at the inception of this uh, joining with the trips because we had to comply the different rules and regulations of the trips and since this is the most dangerous for a developing nation what are the basic natures of a uh, patent patent is a negative right why it's being called as a negative right because patent is not giving you for its uh, direct or spontaneous exploitation of your patented product or process is actually stopping others it, it is called in the language of the law right of alienations so you are stopping others that you cannot produce the particular product or a process so that's a negative right at the same time it's a positive right because if we do not uh, go for this rewarding route or a patent route and certainly no inventor will be encouraged to go and burn their midnight sweat so that's very important reward is needed it's an intangible property an exclusive rights given by the government to that inventor time bound 20 years which is most important is a territorial suppose one medicine or molecule is patented in uh, india it is uh, patent right is only available within that india Indian jurisdiction same uh, thing is happens with uh, any kind of molecule which is uh, patent is granted in say for any european nation say for a sweden denmark or any anywhere or us canada germany japan so wherever it is uh, which office has granted that part patent for a molecule or any kind of vaccine or any kind of uh, process or product that patent right is available only within that nations not beyond that nations and there is no international patent only the international patent applications in the patent document there are two types of claims one is a independent claims another one is a dependent independent so in your project or in your research if you have uh, two different inventions in the same project you should apply to the different two patent application you should not include two patent inventions in the same patent applications it is called the unity of inventions rules of the patent law so independent claim and the dependent claim suppose anyone after getting uh, your patent after granting your patent if anyone infringes one of your rights say you have uh, one independent claim and 19 dependent claims in your patent document or in your patent any one of the beta secondary i mean it's a dependent claim or an independent claim any of the claim 
is infringed by anyone, immediately the whole patent you can claim is infringed. It is as per the patent law. As I said, you have to disclose, disclose your inventions. So these are the disclosure. Is the technical term for the provisional specification. Suppose you have started with your uh, project uh, with a new and a novel idea to produce a novel product or a process. Immediately, you should go to the patent office for a patent application along with the provisional specification. This is very important. Time really matters in case of a patent because in that case, you will get a priority time, priority date. And after finishing your project, I mean, after completion, because there is a time period, given time period, scheduled time period. Right now, it's a, a 15 months and three month possibly grace period. So you have to submit your complete specifications. That means a complete disclosure of your invention to the patent office. And this looks look like the patent document, you know, date of publication, date of filing, applicant abstract, applications number, technical class inventor. Basic three aspects are there. One is a bibliographic aspects, and then claim aspects, and then description, and the drawing. Drawing is always preferred. So let me explain the whole issue in a nutshell. This bulb, separate, this is an invention. I've tried to show through a diagram. This is an invention, and this is a person who claims this as a patent owner of this wall for inventions. If you want to come without taking any permissions, here permission means a licensing. Okay. Then this red line will consider as a test versus will be prosecuted. If you want to make that particular thing, the alternative route, you can pick up that alternative route with a different product, obviously with a different product, maybe an analogous. And another thing you can analogize with a toll gate in the national highway we give we stand we stop in the toll gate to give some uh, toll price taxes are the toll taxes are there so if you want to use that particular invention for your own invention or generating a new knowledge you have to come through this toll gate that means you have to take permissions with a royalty that is the basic understanding. So let us discuss a little things about the patent timeline. Uh, I will not focus on this uh, legal aspects. As I said, amended in 99, 2002, 2005. And our Indian Patent Act, like all other acts in India, depending right now, including our Indian constitution, is uh, highly influenced by the British because India was a colony under British. So everything is almost uh, every act there is a similarity at least uh, these acts are the sections and article actually inspired by the British Act. From the 2005 January 1, 2005 we have compared the chief's rules and regulation. In the brief time of the patent agreements under these chiefs here, yes, starting with the 1995, very important other agreements are also there. I would not focus on this. Paris Convention is a very important for a patent application. French Patent Law 70, NT1, US Patent Act 1790. So there are uh, different countries at the different starting point of their patent laws and rules and regulation. After that, with the time, it has been amended on time to time. Now the main focus is beyond this biology, what is happening? What is happening with this patent and the IP along with this COVID issues? Let me discuss a few uh, other important issues that would certainly influence our understanding of our uh, patent and the COVID crisis. That is a subjective and objective inventorship. Basically, it's a philosophical idea. Professor Graham Dartfield is a famous uh, researcher in the field of on this intellectual property rights. And he was a lawyer, advocate. So uh, he said, what is the basic of this, our uh, creation? What is at the root of the our creations? Creation, are basically, there are two catalysts by which we go for any uh, invention. 
that is subjective and objective subjective is you know is a creative impulse or a you can call it a, a workmanship thinker or a, somebody has got some uh, internal motivation internal inspiration to solve a particular problem and then he work for that throughout the life and then develop with some invention so that's a subjective impulse or a, something something internal motivation that inspires to go for a particular invention that's a subjective catalyst and what is objective in our case in a covid crisis here the name clearly suggests it's objective that means it's driven it is driven by some outside motivation inspired by outside uh, you know uh, outside external factors or uh, so this obviously it's a market driven it's a money everything is a money driven in case of this objective particularly in the field of intellectual property rights in the 90s let us go back to the uh, 1960s and 70s before this trip era, what exactly happened and we are suffering from uh, all these rules and regulations and then protocol and its root and origin actually lying in 1960s and 1970s in 1960s and 70s all these multinational companies pharmaceuticals big pharmaceutical companies uh what they have done they have opened their patentable subject right now you know mouse trap to mice everything is a patentable only the celestial things are excluded other than everything is a patent object okay and the creations of a new right as i said the beginning of this uh, uh sui generis system a latin word the system of its own database rights or the plant vitas rights because india has greatly affected with all this uh, new rights never it is considered because india was a uh, uh, traditionally not very uh, you know familiar with the ip issues and then progressive standardization different kinds of standards they have developed and uh, they have taken one thing in consideration only few major multinational companies they have developed these trips rules and regulations and under these wto under the ages of these trips they have spread and they have propounded all these theories in all over the world as a trips member you have to comply with all this right but it is against our value it is against our value and they have thought that we are sharing the same values no we are not sharing the same values and cultures and the customs and rituals but they have thought a monoistic culture they have propounded and they have actually spread and all this a monoculture through their rules and regulations and that is quite unfortunate for all of us as i said the patent number is given us pto image patent trademark office there is a matter of 1870 mouse trap we never thought about it would have been a uh, patent product and the mice and the, you know the first animal that was you know got this uh, animal patent is the onco mouse howard onco mouse patent number is given so uh, in a very beautiful and interesting study i came across i have come across very recently with this the march study in 1825 there were 12 percent patent to corporations and right now 1998 very recently 2000 around only 12.5 to independent inventors when the inventorship shifts from single or individual inventor or workmanship tinkerer or, or individual inspired motivated internally motivated inventorship to externally and money driven corporations what happens i will show after few slides okay and that is the root of all cause we understand about the life science we carry out our research in our laboratory but our research and our whatever product we have invented in our uh, research laboratory beyond that everything is controlled by money and there is a patent business and different interest groups are there 
very important favorable changes happened in the before these trips ultimately this all this change actually included have been included in these trips agreements earlier you could have been an inventory there was no concept of the assigned rights right now suppose you are working in a one institute say for a one csr laboratory you might be an inventor but first applicant would be the csir okay and then if you are a member of our trips and uh, any foreign companies would be treated in india as a domestic player that's a national treatment very interesting changes one great economist stigler 1971 he published a paper in fact it's a uh, might be a very old concept but he popularized this concept of regulatory capture this major multinational or a giant pharmaceutical companies they have captured all these trips and all other regulatory bodies that is a clear unholy nexus among these and what happens if a particular resource is controlled or claimed by a different uh, inventors ownership if ownership is claimed by many actors many players and certainly what happens suppose you want to make up uh, one uh, molecule you need to take permission from say for a 10 persons separately and without taking permissions or taking a uh, license from all these 10 companies or 10 players if you are not in position to make your molecule or apparatus or whatever the thing that you are going to produce and certainly it becomes a chaotic things if cooperation fails everything is failed so that's a heller concept and it is uh, says the tragedy of the anti commons absolutely it's a tragedy of the anti commons and another thing when there is a nexus there is undisclosed information that means they are not sharing information clearly before the public and that makes a information asymmetry so what is happening silently i would show you in the last few weeks i was working with the data i would show you when everything is you know uh, okay we are calling it's a new normalcy but nothing is normal you know but they are doing their business in a very not only usual way that thing is a very unusual way rather i would say say for a profitability of the pharmaceutical industry in cases astronomically i have taken the data the latest data the oxford astrazeneca combined and the collaborated medicine what we are taking in india as a covishield okay you just try to find out the latest revenue in the last 2020 it's a 258 billion per 2020 and the last revenue in the uh, last quarter 7.4 billion and the ceo is saying that last year performance marked a significant step forward for astrazeneca despite the significant impact from the pandemic we delivered double digit revenue growth said ceo pascal soriat cnbc paper so you see the astronomical number 25 billion when all over the world people are suffering people are dying and they are earning in astronomical let us stick up with the popular one the pfizer and biontech uh, vaccine full year 2020 revenue 41.9 billion in the last quarter 2020 the revenue 11.7 billion and this biontech company is basically inventor and the pfizer is a marketing and the agreement regulations and the authority connections and other collaborating institution so biontech is considered uh, is the inventor real inventor and they are producing all this uh, technology they have the technical technology they are they have a licensing agreement with the pfizer and they are actually marketing and the producing mass production and uh, biontech saying that boosted its covid-19 sales 12.4 billion euros 15.1 billion for this year see this moderna most interesting happens with the moderna i would uh, uh, tell you after few slides because i have
come across with a very confidential document I would like to share with you because it's no more, uh, uh, you know, confidential right now. It's available in the internet. You have to search out in the databases. Moderna is saying that's 19.2 billion. So in the last year when it was a nightmare, still a nightmare is going on all over the world. A pandemic is happening, but some companies, you see, some few, comp few companies, like Pfizer, BioNTech, AstraZeneca, and then a few other companies, they are selling their product. They are selling their product in the name of this vaccine, and they're earning in billions and billions of rupees, dollars, actually. So leading vaccine, you know, you, I know uh, that you all know about this. Just I'm telling you what is happening. This AstraZeneca is a viral vector. Moderna is RNA vaccine, Pfizer RNA vaccine, and Johnson & Johnson is a viral vector vaccine. You see, what happens? What happens in the meanwhile, I have uh, searched out this all these patent databases. This is the WIPO patent databases. AstraZeneca and the University of Oxford, they have applied with this patent number in the PCT group. In the, World Intellectual Property Organizations. And the title of the patent is the Simian Adenovirus and Hybrid Adenoviral Vectors. They have already applied it. And you see, and if you go to the uh, patent database, patent database is actually is a mine of information, lots of information because data has something to tell you, which is undisclosed. You can easily understand uh, that coronavirus, uh, whatever is happening here, sometimes I feel that uh, before behind that picture, something already happened last four or five years back. If you go to the patent history, we'll find that similar patent vaccines they have already applied or already patent is granted to in their names. Say in the Canada, patent vaccine, these vaccines, I mean, this. Uh, AstraZeneca Oxford University vaccine is granted and the patent number is 2837274 granted in 25th May 2021 this year. See this. And I have checked once again this Canadian International Property Office, the patent database, and I found that. Same. I found that it's already patented. Then I searched the European patent database, space.net, European Patent Office database. I found the same thing. I found the same thing. It's already published. It's not uh, granted yet, but it's already published. Published means uh, it is waiting for objection. If anybody actually insert any objections after patent application, it would be readjusted or might be revoked. So what are the important technologies they are focusing on all these companies? mRNA technology, the lipid nanoparticle technology, and delivery system technology to achieve the dear desired biological response. Then I searched out this paper, it's very recently published in the Nature Biotechnology, volume 39, May 21. So very recently, and this visualization can tell you another story. Another story that I found this Moderna, Moderna vaccine has got a connection with the NIS. So chasing out this connection or this relationship, I found that uh, this BioNTech company, which is uh, follow the dates, March 15, 2018, March 5, 2013, September 26, 2013, BioNTech already have received such patent and these are active. And based on this technology, lipid SNP, nanoparticle, and plus MRI technology, all these three. They have got these three US patents. Very recently, they have submitted another patent application for this same technology with a little bit changes. January 22, 2020, it's pending. All these three are pending. And this patent landscape says that BioNTech in the field of this lipid NP or mRNA they are the leader. So if you want to produce any COVID vaccine based on mRNA technology, you have to take permissions from the BioNTech company without giving money or a royalty or taking license from the BioNTech. 
you cannot go for any productions of any mrna technology or a lipid and based technology based covid vaccine what is interesting that is the confidential document i found in that a uh, nature paper uh, there is a linkage between the Moderna and nih and i found hope hopefully you can find in the left side it is clearly written nih Moderna confidential agreements of material transfer agreement it is clearly saying that national institute of health is a federal government us uh, research funding research funders they provide uh, different research granting for the health related not only within uh, us also beyond us so they have the different technologies and different patented products but still they have never taken uh, such kind of actions with this any uh, private company particularly in the time of this pandemic they have taken a multilateral a material transfer mta we call it a material transfer agreement mta uh, it is collaborating and taking a confidential agreement for material transfer between this modern so whatever moderna is saying that it's a modern vaccines actually technology is coming from national institute of health and national institute of health is funded by public exchequer taxpayers money that is the twist in this issue you know in the past 20 years national institute of health has spent more than a half a trillion dollars this helps drive innovations nih mostly funds outside the research as i said what is interesting it's a director what is said by director we do have some particular stake in the intellectual property so the paper nature biotechnology is absolutely right he got the right answer for that yes nih nih has that connections and this connection based on this confidential agreement for material transfer now most of the leading first generation covid 19 vaccine candidates including those by pfizer biontech johnson johnson novavax curevac moderna are using the publicly developed 2p approach is a 2p means p stands for proline approach technology that is uh, developed by nis national institute of health so far we have uh, discussed about the patent to uh, patent issues it is not the patent only the different forms of intellectual property is badly affecting this uh, covid 19 pandemic crisis that is uh, you know the kind of mask we use obviously it's a surgical mask it is a already patented design patent and then medical gloves is already patented over here she gown and then this is a sprayer with advertising everything is design patented so list is endless you know the patent testing kit i mean so i was covid testing uh, kit i was checking and i was verifying all these patch here is a patent database and that gives you a clear picture what is happening with the patent related with the covid gears and the different diagnostic tools and techniques i found this all these covid 19 emergency diagnostic kits are patented and what are the companies involved over here? You can find in the website. GSK, Bayer, RDA Korea, Pastor, Novartis, Pfizer, CNRS, BMOI, University of California, and Rochester. So we in the developing nations, we are uh, spending lots of money. Our economy is uh, badly, badly affected. So, you know, these companies in earning in billions by selling their products process in the different form or the different IP protected form. Another thing is the copyright, copyright on the different apps, apps on contact tracing and the symptom tracking software that is also copyrighted. Right now in India, you know, uh, patent uh, uh, copyright is also given for this. Uh, computer programming so it is also copyrighted but i tried a lot i did not find the copyright uh, number and registrations number because most of the cases nowhere it is mentioned what is interesting india 
is vouching for a uh, tree swiver we'll be discussing but i found i, I, I unearthed this uh, information from indian patent database the ventilator the most important and the you know critical equipment in covid uh, diagnosis as well as uh, I mean, uh, covid treatment somebody has already applied for the applications of uh, rapid ventilation systems that is from germany and application happened in 31 31st january filing date 31st january 2020 one someone from cause to plus from germany he has applied for the veins for the impeller of a ventilator impeller xcl ventilator so he has applied for rapid ventilator technology and i mind out an, another another uh, ventilator is patent application is a 9th march 2020 so india is vouching for trips waiver at the same time indian patent office design patent office i mean it's a, a ip office ip india.nic and you can visit that site you will find that you can this is a, a open database you can search it out so you can easily find out uh, this is quite dubious because you know in one way we are saying that we want a, uh, this wave trips waiver Yes, this is needed. It's not a debatable issue. But uh, at the same time, you are accepting application for these uh, COVID gears, or which is considered as the most important, the critical equipment in the COVID treatment. That is really very contradictory, I found, at least. The different vaccines right now, uh, 17 vaccines are uh, in the EU, you know. And uh, what is happening with the COVID-19 vaccines due to this uh, possibly uh, you can remember in the last uh, two or three months back or my, maybe five months back these companies this serum institute of technology and then covaxin all these companies that were producing all this vaccine they said it uh, it is uh, not possible to pick up the uh, production ramp up the production why why can't we ramp up the production because there are lots of issues are connected with it Primarily, it's a trade barrier and trade barrier giving with the bottlenecks on the supply chain, supply chains in the raw material, which is coming from the United States. But no, nobody has or uh, no newspaper on the no news uh, report has published what are the exact raw materials they're looking for, which is not in supply. Anyway, they are claiming that they are not getting. So what is happening because of this, uh, the access gap? And at the same time, you know, vaccine nationalism happening in almost all developing nations, particularly the Indian subcontinent. But at the other end, there is a lot of inequality in accessing and affording these vaccines, COVID-19 vaccines. So this is the time to rip uh, patents and other IPs. Lack of availability, accessibility and affordability of vaccine. What is the current scenario of the vaccine, vaccine administration? 11 billion doses we need uh, for 70% of the populations and 86, 8.6 billion already we have uh, ordered or uh, uh, it's uh, ready for production, but 6 billion of these will go for a high or upper middle income countries. What happened for the poor nations like us? So, which accounts for 80% of the world population so far have access to less than one third of the available vaccines. You just think, uh, very recently I was also uh, uh, seeing this one paper uh, in some journals, I've forgotten the name of the journal, and the same thing uh, also published in Times of India very recently. <coughs> Sorry. that uh, India is vouching for third dose. <coughs> Sorry. India is also vouching for third dose. And this information can give you a little bit clue towards that. European Union countries, United States, Canada, Australia, and the Japan have pre-ordered more than half of all the vaccines. Only Canada, 
is Canada has uh, pre-ordered approximately eight doses per capita. So one vaccine, uh, eight vaccines per person. And at least 30 countries purchased more COVID-19 vaccines per capita than the United States. It's a very threatening. And these data, this data, official data collected by our world team in data, our world data, this clearly says, you see, Canada is located the apics, the highest vaccination, and India at the lower, only 20%. <coughs> As I already said, why can't we ramp up the production? This is the trade barrier. The different bottlenecks are there, raw material supply problem. Because of this thing, this is not possible to ramp up the production. What is our proposal? Our proposal was to waive the trips, not the whole trips. <coughs> Actually, it is the three things, uh, part two of the trips agreement. <coughs> Very sorry. This is the section one copyright and related rights so waiver shot in these sections and it is located in the part two of the trips agreement section four industrial design section five patents and section seven protection of the undisclosed information as i said it is not only the patents that are affecting this covid treatment and the uh in the fight of this uh, combating this covid <coughs> different other ip tools are also equally responsible. That is a copyright, industrial designs, and protection of undisclosed information. Majority, I found that protection of this undisclosed information. What is interesting that in the chief's law and rules and regulation, they have said we have to protect undisclosed information, not a trade secret, but, but they have never said what would be the modus operandi, how to protect this undisclosed information, or if the undisclosed information is shared or compromised. What would happen? We do not know. Similarly, in Indian Patent Act 1970, there is a no provisions of uh, to protect the state secret. That's a quite interesting. And most of the pharmaceutical companies, in addition with the in addition with the patent, they also opt for the trade secret regularly. What are the flexibilities available in the trips? Uh, newspapers are saying. And the many uh, journals are saying the compulsory licenses, but according to because I have been working in this field almost one and a half decades, so I have a little bit understanding, ABCD understanding of the patenting system. So I found that compulsory licensing is not the best option. What India and South Africa actually approach to trips to waive this uh, this particular section, particular fourth section of the part three that is important and that is really can play a pivotal role in the COVID crisis. Why this compulsory licensing uh, cannot be good option, I will let you know. Sometimes some people understand the, what is the compulsory licensing. Uh, there is a lots of debates in between this. There are two provisions in Indian uh, Patent Act regarding this copyright licensing. That is section 84 and section 92. Suppose you have got a patent. Okay, due to there must have some provisions. Compulsory licensing is a kind of thing, as I said, as a patent invent, a patent owner, you have a exclusive line license to go for any commercial production to give permissions to commercial productions to anybody, any third party. But uh, it is for the normal case. But if country feels that for country's own need or for national emergency or in case of this kind of pandemic, immediately country can snatch your patent. I mean, sir, not in a wrong sense, in a patent from you. I mean, sir, the important patent for the national, uh, in importance, in national crisis, we can go for it, productions, immediate production. And that is uh, available in the section 92 of the Indian Patent Act. The grounds is given national emergency, extreme emergency. 
in here in the section 84 it is not applicable for us sometimes i have seen some newspapers they are saying about this section 84 but it is not uh, applicable obviously you can go for it but uh, we cannot wait for uh, three days because here waiting period three years from the date of the grant of the patent most of the cases we need immediate immediate happen and why it is not the best option because of the, it is a little bit complex for its implementation because it needs uh, negotiations case to case basis and it is only applicable for the patented technology not the uh, application patent application or a patent which is pending or in the pipeline it is not for that but uh, that might be very important for the current situation in that case we cannot uh, invoke we can we cannot uh, start or we can implement this compulsory licensing those who are applied for patent technical institutional inability is also there and start to supply the domestic market and the case of issuing licenses many complexities related to it so this is considering the current uh, emergency compulsory licensing is not the option best option i think what government of india and the south africa they have thought about the waiver india is not looking for any donation india is not looking for anything just india wants to ramp up its production and then supply chain improvement and the more collaborative efforts to ramp up this production that is important and these uh, developed nations, they're objecting, particularly most of the countries, government is influenced by these major pharmaceutical companies. And, more, and if you go through the origin of these pharmaceutical companies, uh, Pfizer, Bayer, Novartis, GSK, you will find that the this company's location is in US, Canada, Switzerland, Norway, European Union, Japan. And very recently, though there are companies, major pharmaceutical companies, he was hugely opposed this bidden decision, but he actually uh, agreed and he actually supported India and South Africa's uh, view to wait for a time being. <coughs> and you know, Indian Express May 11, 2021. Pharma companies, including Pfizer, AstraZeneca, had opposed the proposed waiver. And they have said very interestingly, in favor of them, undermine the global response to the pandemic, including the ongoing efforts to tackle new variants. It could also create confusion that could potentially undermine public confidence in vaccine safety and create a barrier to information sharing. They have said, and most importantly, eliminating protections would not speed up production. They are apprehensive that uh, this patent uh, trips waiver would not help in this current situation. So what are the current inspirations? What are the motivation that we can look up to? What are the silver lining in the current situation? Let us try to find. So open innovation, obviously, open innovation is the best choice. And that is the uh, goal, goal of our future world, where all knowledge will be shared. It is very similar, like a free flowing river. And IP is actually a river where a dam is built. Okay. A river in its own course, it always moves in own directions. Nothing can stop it. Very similar way. Now, data and knowledge, whatever research we carry out in our laboratory, if we share with others, the basic concept of this open innovation first uh, chased out by this uh, chase bar in 2003 open innovation. It's a purposeful inflows and outflows of information so that a novel compound can be made or a novel uh, thing can be made. Okay, so it's a based on a participation, collaboration, and sharing of the knowledge. And IP, IP, where we are caging our knowledge, where knowledge is caged. We are not sharing just to get a financial reward. But we must not forget that generations of the knowledge is, a, you know, it's a relay race. Whatever we produce, we actually 
producing based on the knowledge created by our forefathers, our predecessors. And our society is equally paradoxical. Sometimes we are talking about this patenting system as the reward. And at the same time, we want to have our open knowledge. We have to decide. At least COVID-19 has said, has taught us the path we should go for. In a very recent paper in the 2020, I said that uh, I argumented this way that a patent cannot be the only only options to get a reward for our inventions. A patent inventor might have a different rewarding systems in our society. Suppose you have invented something novel, something beneficial, helpful for the society. Obviously, you have burned your midnight well and you must be rewarded. That is uh, very important and that is uh, that is actually sure. But uh, our society, history, if you go to the history, we find that uh, patenting history is not very old, only 600 years. And the current patenting system that we follow right now, almost all nation is actually 100 and 150 years old. So uh, inventions can also go without patents. That is one way. But it's absolutely philanthropic. It is not a possible in the current uh, time when every project is funded by a foreign uh, national and the foreign companies, multinational companies. And then our government, even our government is always talking about this patent. First patent uh, search, then go for a research. But uh, every project cannot have a uh, outcome, the patent. And why should have only one rewarding system patent as a rewarding to the uh, reward to the inventors, that uh, can be another price system. Say for a, suppose you have developed useful for the society, so society, I mean, in the form of a government, can also give you much fund for a better development or to sponsor your dream project. That can also be one option. So open source innovation is another option. I will show you few uh, uh, few examples that is really inspiring. And it's a network is a basically sharing the knowledge, the data. Uh, Vodan is a virus outbreak data network. Vulnerable data, valuable data, past, present epidemics is not always available. As I said, it's a very rarely available. Under this urgent need to harness machine learning and future approaches to discover meaningful pattern in epidemic outbreaks, we need to do better and make this data fair. What is a fair principle? Fair is a findable data. Accessible data, interoperable, and reusable data. That means you should share up data that is workable. I can share you one thing, particularly in the life science, the drug molecule. Suppose uh, you have got one drug molecule. You have invented one drug molecule in a particular, say, for a particular temperature, because in the description, you have to write that. Say, uh, suppose the temperature needed to uh, come out with this drug molecule is a 25.8 degree centigrade. But when you are writing this pattern in the uh, patent description, in the what you are writing, you are expressing everything. At the same time, you are not expressing the exact information. You are not sharing the exact information. Instead of writing the 25 up 5.8 degree, which is important to produce that particular drug molecule, you have written for making this particular drug molecule, you require say for a 22.3 degree centigrade to 29.3 degree centigrade. Instead of writing the specific temperature, you are writing a specific temperature range so that any person go and you have already checked within that uh, temperature range, this drug molecule may be produced. But the efficacy will not be as good as use. So that's a, uh, you know, this patent writing people are very shrewd. They write in that way so that claims should be as narrow as possible so that uh, and at the same time is broad as possible so that it can hamper your design so that you cannot produce that kind of calpel which is uh, that kind of efficient so this way data has to be very transparent interoperable and reusable and open source sharing that's a very interesting initiative coalition for epidemic preparedness initiative and I really like this uh, open COVID place. 
I have come across this open COVID place is a kind of place that you are taking. Suppose you have a uh, lots of you have a lots of patents, many patents in your pet portfolio. It's a business portfolio, and you want to share some of them, or you want to share all of them. You are taking place to share in this COVID crisis that I would share all my patents. Anybody can come, and I would not take any licensing fee, any royalty fee, all of you. And I found many companies, including Amazon, Facebook, at and Allen Institute, Hewlett Packard, all these companies, they have joined it. It's a very interesting and really inspiring initiatives. We must look up to this uh, kind of initiatives. That can be a very good answer to this COVID crisis. An MIT-based open team design. Some people have applied in Indian Patent Office for a, uh, it's a design registration. And then some companies, some universities are doing exemplary inspiring work. That's why they have developed this open source low cost ventilator, MIT. It's a clinical and design consideration will be published online. Goal is to support rapid scale up device productions to alleviate hospital shortage. So it's a uh, very easy to carry out. All these design things will be shared, all these uh, apparatus that you may require to build up this material and you can produce in your own country without giving any to this company. Inspired by this OSDD, by this uh, CSI Act, Open Source Drug Discovery is a very interesting project by the uh, CSI Act. So India is also vouching for open source COVID vaccination, I believe in the years to come or maybe in the days to come we'll be able to our produce our open source covid vaccine in our nation you know it's a very interesting uh, interesting quotations when this jonas sack was asked after uh, inventing this uh, polio vaccine some people asked that uh, who actually owns this patent he said well the patent i would say there is no patent could you patent the sun but those were the kind of days right now the whole economy the nation economy and the world is actually run by these uh, big pharmaceutical companies you know which is the most profitable business in this world after seeing the slides you can easily uh, conclude that it is the health related business yes you are right health related business is the most profitable business in the world right now so shared visions and opportunities, we hope that the world response to the novel coronavirus has taught us that a truly shared experience of a common enemy can unlock the speed, strength and creativity needed to address even the greatest challenge. So let us focus more on creating value than the capturing value in the form of IP or any protected form to save humanity and building mutual trusts. So these are the references. Thank you. Thank you for patience here. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful and enriching lecture. So we have a few questions from our audience. So with your permission, can we go through them? Yeah, yeah you can go. Through. OK, sir. Uh, our first question is uh, <clears throat> trip swaver is important to remove the barriers in timely access of covid vaccine but unless country like us raise their voice in favor of it the endeavor of india and south africa isn't it sir yes absolutely right and uh, in the meanwhile united states has also uh, supported India and South Africa's views. And this is why pharmaceutical companies might not be happy, uh, happy with this uh, uh, US administration decisions, but US administration has already agreed to support these India's and South Africa's views. And certainly, uh, not only that, uh, you know, in the meanwhile, what is happening, the kind of vaccines we are producing in India, uh, say for a Covaxin or a Covishield or a new other 
maybe in the years to come, we'll be going to produce the Sputnik or any other vaccine. We need some raw materials. I tried to understand what are the raw materials, but I did not find what are the raw materials they were talking about because Defense Protection Act, DPA, is actually putting a barrier, a trade barrier to supply all these raw materials. I do not know uh, until the even the trade, uh, even this uh, TRIPS waiver is uh, actually uh, supported by many other developed nations. But until United States removed its DPA barrier to the developing nations, certainly the shortage or inaccessibility of vaccines will not be solved. You are right. It has to be supported by the US and the other developed nations. Thank you, sir. Our next question uh, is from Bijoy Vishash. Is it possible for a nation like India to bring more fluidity in trades and get over these trade barriers and other types of state setbacks, inequalities, and prosper like other developed nations? And how? Uh, it's a very good question, Vijay, but uh, unfortunately, it will take a time. It will take a time. Uh, I do not know whether I will be able to recall or not. Sometimes when Sarah P.J. Abdul Kalam was there, when there was a sanction, uh, there was a kind of some sanction from the United States government for uh, developing our cryogenic engine. That time, then said P.J. Abdul Kalam developed some the sodium technology by the using uh, of the sodium technology. We actually made ourselves mature in our this. Uh, this space technology and any other uh, strategic uh, issues. In spite by that example, we can also go for a development of that new kind of uh, material by which we are producing right now. A new kind of material we can produce by which a new technology we can develop our own COVID vaccine because the kind of technology we are using here, most of the cases I said it's already invented by somebody else. We are simply doing manufacturing and uh, selling it, nothing else in our country. But the inventor is somebody else. Until we ramp up our invention, a new process or a new product will not be able to, uh, you know, our ourselves are mature and as a self-reliant nations. So for our COVID vaccinations or COVID drugs or COVID gears, is concerned. Thank you, sir. Our next question is from Akashlina Marik. Do you think open sourced innovation approaches by the government or society or public can be the future form of a more holistic patenting approach than typical patents? Yes, uh, good question. It's a very good question. Uh, here you know when we are thinking about this open source innovation we are not focusing on this patenting system as i said in my lecture that uh, there could be many different forms of uh, rewarding system instead of this uh, patent because even if you go to the uh, history you will find that sir jesse Bose has developed different and he invented many devices and apparatus he never only one patent was there in the name of sir jesse Bush. so why don't we think in that way we always why should we always go for the patents we need a reward from the society society will give give you the rewards open source innovation is required and it is the lessons taught by after this covid 19 because uh, we have been talking about this open documents, I mean, uh, open source documents, open source software, you know, very recently, uh, skyhub.net, possibly all are aware of that. In our developing nations, uh, when we try to access any research paper, good quality research paper, most of the cases we find the access is denied because our institutions, our laboratory and uh, is not subscribing to that particular uh, quality journals. So if we cannot have any access quality journals how can you prepare a quality journal a quality write up quality article so to write up a quality article you need to quality ingredients in the form of a data or a knowledge 
so open source innovation does not always go for the patenting system we should think about alternative rewarding system by the society to reward an inventor not only the patent because patent in our recent paper i have also said the value because from a country to a country as every person has a different story so every nation has a team thank you sir our next question uh, is from another question is from ali ahmed tader hasan isn't the compulsory licensing discouraging for the potential patent holders no hasan you have uh, asked a very good question and uh, this the uh, compulsory licensing is a provision to help the society in disastrous condition or in a catastrophic or in emergency conditions patent holders basic motivation i believe in that way it is not always the external motivation most of the cases the internal motivation so far i know there is a complexity in the applicant and the assignee and the inventor but the basic inventor even in two days like when you research in a laboratory be it in a csi or icmr or dbt wherever you are working or a university basic motivation is internal motivation our personal impulse towards that invention compulsory licensing is only a legal provision to share your patent with the society in emergency it's a humanistic approach so no inventor should be discouraged by this compulsory licensing. no inventor should be threatened out by this kind of provisions thank you sir our next question is from pobhat kumar swain what is the current status of covid-19 in term of vaccination vaccination uh, canada is in the highest form because i have said that uh, canada has already piled up their vaccine uh, eight vaccines per person and india is in a shambles situation it's a very bad shape only 20% around they have we have administered our vaccine there are uh, different you know vaccine nationalism has uh, developed in the meanwhile and the regarding different political issues have come up with the productions administration you all are aware of that big and uh, because of this thing and then low scale productions in our country our country in india has so far vaccinated only 20% around 20% of people okay thank you sir uh, our last question probably uh, is uh, from prabhat kumar swain is covid-19 is completely eradicated from the world in certain period or year answer to the questions is uh, nobody knows actually but uh, well i was searching the different patent databases for this lecture and i came out with a different uh, interesting information that information by seeing and going through that information i smelled a rat i can say that thing uh, i found that absolutely my sole opinion that what is happening right now it possibly not an accident whatever is happening if you go to the patent history uh, you can find that because uh, developing this mrna technology and the lipid np technology is not a uh, you cannot do it within a single year it takes a, the biologist know uh, years after years is needed to come up with one uh, inventions and there are invention and innovation there is a, a gap is called as a death valley gap is a affordability gap customers preference so different issues are there so when uh, they have started they are patenting this mrna technology lipid mp technology so i smelt a rat a little bit that that is my opinion and uh, i'm unsure i do, because i do not have any answer to your question 
that COVID-19 is completely eradicated or not in the years to come, I do not know. Nobody know. But I can tell you one thing, that these major pharmaceutical companies is actually uh, to control the whole world in their own way. Only eight or nine companies, you can easily find out. Because patent information is a mine of information. They control everything. Very recently, possibly you have uh, seen in a newspaper, one vaccine, one vaccine for this one disease, spinal cord, related to spinal cord, is administered uh, in Bangalore. It costs 16 crores. Even for my mother, uh, who is a, uh, actually cancer patient in the stomach related colon cancer, I had to pay for this uh, uh, 65,000 per uh, this vial, 2 mg vial. And it is made by Novartis. And I can tell you that some pharmaceutical companies, when I was uh, citing this example in Hungary, then uh, year of uh, 2017, you know, that time that uh, patent is completely, uh, you know, uh, patent date is expired. But our Sun Pharmaceutical Company, in our Indian company, that company has developed this Sandostatin LA, the name of that vaccine, I mean, a, a two vial MG that is used for this colon cancer, can also be purchased in only 250 rupees. Why India government is not supporting that thing? Why they are allowing this Novartis to sell their product in 65,000 colon cancer? It's a very, very unfortunate. If you go to the uh, different patent documents will find there is an unholy nexus and all regulatory bodies have captured by these major multinational companies and there is an unholy nexus between this business, stressors groups and the governmental people. So I do not have a straight cut answer. I can give you some examples. Conclusion is yours, inference is yours. Thank you, sir. Uh, so that this uh, th that is all uh, the questions we have today. Thank you, sir, for answering all these questions. Uh, oh, now, thank you, on behalf, oh, thank you, sir. Now, on behalf of our convener, Professor Dr. N. R. A. Banerjee, and from all members of the Ant Biology Organizing Team, I would like to thank our respected speaker, Dr. Shobhuj Kumar Choudhury, for he has joined us with his wonderful and enriching lecture about which has enriched us a lot and to all our audiences. For our viewers, thank you for joining us today. Join us again on 24th July, 2021 for the special lecture will be given by Professor Mo Dashgupto. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website, www.zoologyhub.org. Our talks will be archived in the YouTube channel so that you can check them out later. And thank you again for joining us. Take care, stay safe, and see you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir.